So, I wanted to talk a little bit more about this uh, pandemic amnesty thing. And I think um, there's some uh, honestly pretty helpful introspection about it. There's been a lot of people that have said, you know, hell no, go stuff it. Um, there's been a lot of people that have come out in support of Emily um, personally. And, you know, on the one hand, I don't blame her for writing that piece. Um, and I think that we've all said some version of this um, from the beginning, which is, you know, nope, I don't think that there's a lot of people out there suggesting that we that we uh, punish, whatever that means, um, each and every person that perpetuated the last two years of awfulness. Um, there's obviously tears of influence. There are people that actually made the decisions. Uh, and then there are the normies, and then there, there are everybody in between. So, you know, um, there's that, right? And I think that all of us, or most of us, have had a lot of sympathy from early on for the normies, for that middle third, for those people that had been uh, duped or charmed or scared into, um, you know, attacking their neighbors and, you know, going in on forced masking and medical tyranny and all this great stuff. And, you know, even the ones clapping with glee when people lost their jobs or, you know, that sort of stuff. That's, that's some icky stuff right there, guys. It really, really is. And I think that the problem with Emily Oster's article is a couple things. And number one, it's a clickbaity, shitty headline. She should have never agreed to it. Um, again, obviously, the, um, the piece itself was more um, nuanced than that. Um, and um, you can make a case that she was, um, you know, her heart was in the right place, right? How many times have we heard that in the last two years? We mean well. Um, if, there was this, if only there was a saying about good intentions that was worth repeating here. It was a good one. Um, but the, the issue that I and others had was not about the discussion of, you know, forgiveness. Which nobody's arguing, right? Like, I, I think a couple people came out and said, hey, hoo ha we got to be able to forgive here. We have to, you know, and some people came at it from a, you know, sort of a Christian or religious point of view. And some people came at it from a, um, just an overall societal point of view. Um, I think that that was kind of misreading the room a little bit. Um, you know, the, there are very few people who are like, you know, absolutely no forgiveness, you know, punish everybody, make them pay. Um, and I get that, you know, that vibe, but um, it, that's a that's a scant percentage of, of people talking about this. You know, I don't think it's worth a blog post, or at least you know, especially worth the three or four that came out. Um, you know, kind of side sidewise accusing all of us of being you know cruel and heartless and all this. That's just not that's not really what happened. Um, and you also had some other people that were defending Emily personally. Now, I've said this repeatedly. And it's a, this is a sort of a double-edged thing here, which is Emily was an early original member of Team Reality. Um, she was one of the few experts that I saw that was coming out publicly questioning the interpretation of the data. Um, you know, the stuff that was coming out of uh, Europe, Sweden specifically. Um, she, in, in the summer of 2020, she, you know, was helping us advocate for open schools. She got on some of the Zoom calls we, we tried to have with um, with our administrators and our school boards and things like that. And, you know, it didn't go anywhere. It was like, you know, they were so dug in by that point. Um, but she was willing. She was like, yes, 
this is BS. Let's do this. How can I help? Let's do this. And so, you know, she was one of those. And there were very few at that point in time. And that's points, man. Like, we all give her points for that. Now, the problem with Emily Oster is what happened next. And that is that Emily Oster got a wick of a little bit of flame from the trolls. Just a little bit. Like, she didn't even get, like, the full flamethrower. You know, anything like, you know, that some of us have seen, right? She got just a taste of... You know, they were like, better, better, better not be epic, better not be super spreading, or whatever they were, you know, saying at the time. Because you got to remember that in summer 2020, things had settled in in a bad, bad way. But the cancel brigade was not as sure of itself at that point. They had not. They, they were still a little, little trepidation with the. You know, I'm going to ruin your life and stuff. That, that sort of came later. It came after the election, actually. And then when the, the vaccine started rolling out, that was when that really started going. And it, it, in summer 2020, it was, um, it was more, it was more of a, a disagreement, to put it lightly, about the stratification of the, of the data, the age data, the risk. You know, we were still arguing about IFR and, and things in, in the summer of 2020. I mean, I wasn't because we knew what it was. Um, John, John Ioannidis knew what it was. We knew what it was from Italy. As bad as Italy was, we had the numbers. You know, even if they were inflated out of Italy, they were good numbers. They were way better than, than what we were pretending they would be. And that's where Emily was coming in. And, but then she, you know, got a little whiff of, you know, pushback. And she turtled. She just disappeared. And she quickly, you know, and it was funny because, you know, there were a lot of us that were very public and had felt a lot of this uh, very similar, you know, um, and we got it. You know, we understood why she did what she did. You know, she's this highfalutin professor at Brown. You know, she likes to go to her little cocktail parties and all this stuff. I'm, I'm probably, you know, not being charitable there, but... But, you know, I mean, this is a woman who has probably worked her whole life to get where she got. And she is an expert in her field. And she is very smart. And she um, was very nice. Okay? She was. She's not a bitch. But when there was a little inkling that these icky people might, you know, start poking at her comfortability, you know, sort of her elite status. She shut it down, man. She, she bowed. She bent the knee, like, preemptively, like, very quickly. And that was a disappointment, you know, for us parents, you know, because we were just, we were just, you know, killing ourselves at that point. It was awful. And to lose somebody like Emily Oster, um, to sort of slink away, did a couple things. You know, it, it took it took a, an important body out of the the, the 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 group that we were trying to form. Because what we were trying to, you know, like you need consensus, you need numbers. You know, at the very least, that was a that was a that was a prominent number out of our out of our groups, right? Now. Another thing happens is when they successfully, the cancel, you know, trolls successfully, um, you know, work their their black magic on somebody and get them to shut up or, or, or shut down or, or remove, is that, you know, they they not only have this this uh, this pride in in having done that, they also spin this narrative very quickly that oh. Emily Oster saw the light, right? It wasn't that we, you know, bullied her into silence, right? It's that she knows that we're right and that she was wrong and she is doing now doing the right thing and removing herself from the conversation. That's what the narrative is. That's the POV. That's the mini narrative there. You know, I mean, I, 
I don't know what's in her heart, but I really don't think that she changed her mind at all. The data was the data, the stats were the stats. You know, the fact is that kids should have never been out of school. We all know it. We all knew it back then. Well, some of us knew it back then. And she knew it back then. That's, that's the most important thing. And then, you know, fast forward, she had that mask study that showed that masks don't work. And she, you know, got the, the wick of the flame again. And um, she, you know, not only, you know, piped down, she reversed it. And that was sort of the second thing. Because, you know, we had... We had given her a little bit of a pass, you know, in fall of 2020 when she sort of, you know, uh, pulled herself out of the out of the fray. Again, we were bummed. We were um, we were disappointed. We thought it was pretty cowardly. We really did. Um, but then when she changed that mass study, that was a big that was a betrayal. You know that that's a big deal. That's not just just you know going quiet. That's actively, you know, manipulating the facts, you know, to appease <clears throat> a bunch of awful, you know, mostly fake people. Like, what are you doing? You know, like, really? And then she comes out uh, for forced vaccinations, you know, and mandates and things like that. And that was, you know, for a lot of people were like, you know what, you know, whatever points that you got for being early and being good early and being helpful. And, you know, and she, it, whatever help was to be had at that point, she still gets credit for that because, you know, that needle didn't move much in the summer of 2020, but it moved, I think, enough in a way that we would have gotten our kids back in school later, possibly, had she not done what she did at that point, right? She helped us plant that initial seed of truth with these morons. So that's one thing. But the attacks, you know, attacks. You know, the criticisms of, of Emily Oster as, as a human, as a person, as an individual, are not meant to be cruel or mean. Um, and I don't think a lot of them are. And, and this, is, this is one of these things that bothers me about, you know, social media, because there are also a lot of posts about, you know, hey, you know, there's a lot of people being, you know, misogynistic or mean to Emily Oster. I don't see a lot of that. You know, I even saw, I even saw somebody say that about the other side, you know, the, the zero COVID people who also hate her, right? She's also a pariah with them. So, I mean, you know, quickly, she didn't please anybody. She pissed everybody off, right? She is like, like nobody likes her because she did this. She did, just couldn't stick to a side. She just decided to piss everybody off. But anyway, back to the, the, the point, which is, yes, the internet can be really, really cruel, especially with, you know, anonymous people and, you know, the trolls and I don't know, there's a bunch of fake people on there and I don't know what's going on, but I actually didn't see a lot of outright cruelty to her. I saw some people, you know, you know, call her a name or two, but again, nothing, it's nothing, it's not, it's not that bad. And, you know, I don't like any unnecessary cruelty either, but, you know, I'm sorry, but she's a big girl. You know, she, <laughs> she doesn't deserve abuse. Nobody's saying that. She doesn't deserve meanness or cruelty, but she deserves to be called out. You know, the chutzpah of her to write that article. And that, I think that that's my issue with it, right? Like, you know, other people had talked about this amnesty stuff and just the gall of her writing this thing. Her of all people, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I also think that Monica Gandhi is a nice person. You know, I, I think that she means well, but there's a difference. I think that Monica Gandhi actually believes a lot of the stuff that she, that she writes and tweets. And we have a problem with that for a different reason, because she should be smart enough, you know, to not, you know, come down on some of these positions the way she does. But Emily Oster knew, like, that's the thing. Like, she is smart enough. She knew before. She knew that schools were safe to open, and then she decided not to advocate for it. She knew it was harming the kids, and she decided to, to, to stop, to stop speaking up. She knew that masks didn't work and likely caused harm to kids, and she reversed 
she came out with that and reversed that like literally reversed it due to pressure and then she went and all went all in on you know you know in, encouraging people to be fired and to be you know societally shunned and 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 demonized and and you know and, and ostracized for not getting medicine that they don't want or need you know again you know, i know that she's a nice person like she she was helpful and nice to us i've heard good things about her friends of ours are friends with her so it's not it's not personal in that way but as a person when you do this when you you know, choose the path that Emily Oster chose, and then you write this article. That's why a lot of people are like, oh, hell no. It is what it is. And again, it could be a lot worse and it's not. So stop pretending that it's, you know, it's some sort of awful dog pile. She's getting ratioed. She's getting taken to the, the woodshed a little bit. But again, like this isn't, you know, we, we got to have the same standards for everybody. You know, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, go to go to Elise Stefanik's timeline. You know, when you get a chance, and compare that to the the comments that Emily Oster got. There's a it's night and day. There you go.